Over the past three months, the economic waves that have rocked Zimbabweans for years have turned into a tsunami of astronomical price increases that threaten to drown all but the most wealthy citizens. At the end of June 2022, a loaf of bread cost over 600 Zimbabwean dollars and two liters of cooking oil more than 3,000 local dollars. The official rate of the Zimbabwean dollar to the United States dollar was 347 to 1. The parallel or black market rate was closer to 700 to 1. Even by official calculations, inflation in June was at 192%. The country's finance minister, Mutuli Ngube, blamed price inflation on market indiscipline, economic saboteurs, and the impact of higher energy and food prices due to the Russian war on Ukraine. He denied that excessive government spending was the cause of the crippling inflation. Yet, in the very same month, June 2022, the Finance Minister introduced a bill to Parliament asking for legislative forgiveness for exceeding his requested budget in 2020 by 100 billion Zimbabwean dollars and in 2019 by more than 6 billion Zimbabwean dollars. At the official exchange rate that existed in those years, his financial excesses clocked in at over 1.2 billion dollars and 400 million United States dollars respectively. Zimbabwe's constitution states that if the Minister of Finance exceeds his stated budget, he must bring to Parliament a condemnation bill no later than six weeks after the accounts have been finalized. The bill for the overspend for 2019 and 2020 was only brought to Parliament in the middle of June 2022. Minister Mturi Ngube was therefore a year late for 2019 and two months late for 2020. And if 1.6 billion United States dollars was not bad enough, in 2019 the minister had introduced another condemnation bill to Parliament asking to regularize overspending of almost 10 billion United States dollars between 2015 and 2018. The bill was introduced in the National Assembly but expired before it could be considered. So that 10 billion blowout remains illegal with no ramifications for the man in charge of the nation's purse and no details as to what the money was spent on. If the minister overspent by 100 trillion Zimbabwean dollars in 2020, what did he spend outside his stated budgets in 2021 and 2022? Is it this fiscal indiscipline that is fueling inflation and sabotaging the economy? After all, he had no qualms about blatantly violating the constitution with his spending in 2019 and 2020. When the current budget was presented to Parliament last year, the official exchange rate was one US dollar to 185 Zimbabwean dollars. Now it's closer to 400 to 1. And yet the finance minister has not returned to Parliament requesting a supplementary budget. While there is no direct link between the overspend in 2019 and 2020 to today's ever-increasing inflation, the government and the finance minister in particular have shown a blatant disregard for the laws of basic economics and the laws of the country. Economic fundamentals tie increased money supply to inflation. The government cannot create United States dollars but it can create various forms of the local currency. More money devalues the local dollar, sending prices higher. At the beginning of May this year, as prices spiraled out of control, the finance minister, together with the head of Zimbabwe's Reserve Bank, flanked President Emerson Mnangagwa to announce a raft of new measures. The key one, banning all bank lending with immediate effect. The rationale being that excess lending by the banks fueled currency speculation. However, his announcement had the consequence of suspending all credit 
In addition to the economic chaos this presidential announcement caused, the measures had no legal instrument to back them, as the legislative think tank Veritas Zimbabwe noted. The late lawyer and constitutional expert Alex Magaisa also observed at the time. It took several days for the finance minister to publish, belatedly, the relevant statutory instruments to provide legitimacy to the illegal declarations. And within weeks, the new measures were abandoned, only to be followed at the end of June 2022 with a new announcement that interest rates were increasing from 80% to 200%. While some commodities sourced on international markets have increased in price and impacted global economies since Russia's invasion of Ukraine, those increases alone cannot explain Zimbabwe's inflation rate, which is amongst the highest in the world. With general elections scheduled for 2023, the ruling zanu PF party cannot afford to introduce austerity measures to reduce inflation. Similarly, with the ruling elite used to free agricultural inputs, funding for pet projects, free international travel, and no financial oversight, they are not likely to curb their spendthrift habits. And with public sector nurses and doctors already on strike, claiming incapacitation due to low wages, it may only be a matter of time until they are joined by teachers and other civil servants. As the 2023 polls approach, if the ruling ZANU-PF hopes to stay in power after the votes have been counted, its choices are limited. It can consider deploying carrots or sticks. But any carrots aimed at increasing salaries in real terms or providing meaningful funding to health or education risk sending prices and the cost of living into the stratosphere and possibly sending citizens onto the streets. Without financial carrots to offer, ZANU-PF is left with a stick. A weapon it knows well. Wow.